How's it going everyone? The Trout91 in back for the Susulo playthrough this episode number 20. If you missed the last episode, do go and check it out in the description or the card in the top right hand corner of your screen. We didn't have the most productive of times in the new year. Our second half of the season started out with a one all draw against Bologna. We then had a cup game against Atalanta where luck was just not on our side and we conceded an own goal in extra time, which saw us knocked out in the first round of the Italian Cup. We then traveled to Torino, where we drew 2 all, and Emanike proving his critics wrong with an exceptional brace to save us a point. Now, coming into this episode, we do confirm the loan deals of Ajpong and Jankovic. Now, at the start of the season, you might have seen that I was looking at how much Ricci would be worth to bring him on permanently at Sassuolo. And it was about three or four million he was going for. I didn't have the funds at that time. And during the transfer window, I saw that Galatasaray actually put in a bid of a free transfer. They offered a contract to Ricci. It looked like he was going on a free transfer and Galatasaray were trying to entice him with a contract deal. And I was like, no, 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 no. Ricci's my boy, and Freebie is my middle name. Now, apparently Sensi and Pellegrini spoke to Berardi because that tramp wanted a better contract. Now, he's been injured for six months, and he's played extremely average at best in his past couple of games. So I thought it was pretty audacious of him asking for a new contract. Now, coming into our first game of the episode, we played Empoli. I decided to switch things around, obviously taking Mazzatelli out of the team, bringing on Stefano Sensi into the midfield, moving Pellegrini to the box-to-box -box position. And I actually took Politano out because I wasn't particularly happy with his performances. Took him out and brought Ricci on, maybe to give us a bit more of attacking threat and help Berardi, Gary Hooper link up a little bit better, even Emmanuel Emanike when going forward. And that's exactly what happened as Ricci opened up the scoring to get the first goal in the match. And the second came from another change I had made, Stefano Sensi getting the second goal to bag us the three points. Now our second game of the transfer window is against Palermo. And before we dip into that, the transfer window is coming to a close. Now the first bit of business was the fact that we obviously sealed the deal on Ricci joining us at the end of the season on a free transfer, which was absolutely beautiful. We also let Letshirt go for one minute. Like, I, w I was really gutted to have to do this because he looked like he could have been a great player but he just doesn't have the stats to get in the first team. I just feel like he's going to sit there, waste away. I couldn't seem to get him on a loan deal either. And I don't want his stats to decline and his value go down if I was to potentially sell him on. So I had to sell him on. At Atalanta picked him up for one million in the end. It was a tough choice, but one that we had to make in the end. Now, I saw in the last episode, a lot of people were skeptical about whether Emanike was worth the money. A lot of people also saying that we could still potentially get someone else. Well, boys, let me tell you. The man I have been waiting for, Danny Ings, was transfer listed. Every time I went to try and get him on loan, his wages were just too much for me. They wanted all his wages paid and I just couldn't afford it. But with him transfer listed, I managed to secure his services for £100,000 a month in fees and 40% of his wages. Gary Hooper, again, I, I just feel like he needs to do a bit more for the team and score a few more. It's all well and good banging them in when we're playing against terrible teams or when we're well in front and the team's carrying you, but he needs to be the guy who makes a difference in those tough games when we need goals. I also don't feel like he's linking up with my wingers as well as he probably could do. He does it every now and then, but it's not consistent enough for me. And it is getting to a nervy point where we will start dropping points because we're not scoring enough goals. And that's the big problem for me. And that's what I felt like was a big problem in the first half of the season. Is there's so many games we dropped because we just didn't score enough goals. So we finalised the registration of the team. Pietro Iamello is obviously the only man not to get into the squad. The only other big name, well, you say big name, the only other name worth mentioning that wasn't registered. Pretty much everyone who's not registered at this point is either a youngster, not good enough, or is on loan at the moment. So and Antonio Ragusa, who was obviously registered just in case my wingers did find themselves with an injury during the season, he won't be making it into the team. I've left him unregistered. So in today's game against Palermo, obviously last time we played them, we won very comfortably 3-1. This time we're away from home. Duncan's back from international duty. We're also bringing in Danny Ings for his debut. Last minute signing in a transfer window. We're also going to bring back Politano. I'm actually putting Berardi on the bench because I haven't been particularly impressed with his game so far. I don't think he's particularly done anything. He's not assisted. He's not scored a goal. So I'm pretty okay with just leaving him on the bench at the moment. Maybe it'll give him a, something to think about and he might come out 
all guns are blazing next time. Still trying to figure out whether I want to play him as a striker or as a winger, uh, but I've now got so many strikers, it almost seems a bit pointless playing him as a striker. They're playing a narrow formation, Palermo, so I'm going to make sure that we are closing down those two strikers. I don't really like playing against two strikers. It's just too many people to deal with. It should be an opportunity for us to exploit the width like we like to do, so hopefully it should be a relatively straightforward game. And I seem to have pumped them up, so we are ready for this game. Let's see if we can actually pull off a result here today. Palermo are currently six points behind us in the table as we've got an opening chance. And, ooh, almost falling to Di Michaelis there. But Palermo win today. They will be hot on our heels. And we've obviously still got Napoli behind us who appear to have played. And it doesn't look like they've made too much ground on us, I don't think. So we're okay there. But Torino have leapfrogged us by one point get ourselves going. Now, we have got a lot of pace up front, so I have stuck ourselves on counter, and obviously we are away from home. I just, I feel like it's going to be a difficult game, because Palermo, it wasn't, I don't think it was too one-sided last time out, even though it was a 3-1 victory in the end. I think Palermo gave us a decent little game, as they are very much in control at the moment. We've had the majority of the possession, but they seem to be posted up in our half of the pitch. Now, if you're wondering what drink I'm having today, it's a Tesco No Added Sugar Cloudy Lemonade. No artificial flavours or colours in this bad boy. Love a good cloudy lemonade on a hot day. And it is very hot in England at the moment. And it is the weekend. Me and uh, Susie actually went out for a nice walk. I think it's like three kilometre walk in the end. Enjoy the sunshine. Get ourselves out and active, obviously. We still go to the gym very regularly. At least twice a week I go. Do my, do my sexy body. Got to keep... Nice and trimmed for all the pretty boys out there. Palamo still having their opportunities. Now, let's see if we can attack with some pace. We've obviously got lots of pacey options to move forward. Ricci's got it. He had lots of space, but it wasn't the best touch, which has completely halted the whole attack, given away the ball. And now Palamo are on a counter-attack of their own. But Di Machenis with a great tackle there and following up for the second time. Can he win the third ball? No, he doesn't. And he is a bit out of position. We managed to win it back anyway. Oh, we, why do we keep giving the ball away? Nestrovsky goes for the shot. He shouldn't even have had the opportunity. They've got a lot of pink shirts. And I feel like our wingers should drop back a little bit to try and receive the ball. But they're not. Let's see what Politano does. Obviously, missed out on the previous game. But he has been brought back in because I'm not overly thrilled with how Berardi has started off coming back into the team. Maybe he's just shaking off some cobwebs, but he's really been unimpressive so far, which is a shame because everyone, pretty much everyone who's spoken to me about Berardi has said how amazing he has been for their saves. And so I'm hoping that this is just a temporary thing and he does move forward. I remember playing another little throwback from last year, playing as West Ham. I had Dimitri Payet on my, in my West Ham team, obviously. And you think, oh, God, Dimitri Payet must be an absolute beast. He did nothing for me. He really did not do enough for me. And it got to a point where I was like, well, he's not offering me anything. I might as well sell him and get the money and try and get someone who is going to do something for me. And I really would hate to sell Berardi because the potential on him is immaculate. And he's already at a very good state. And it's nice to have him who can fill in a lot of spaces. He can play up front. He could play on the right, he could play sort of on the left, he can play just in behind the striker, I think, as well. So having someone who with that much utility would be a shame to sell, but if he's not doing anything, you almost got to consider cutting your losses and doing something with that money. I mean, think about how much, we could probably get 30 million for him quite easily, and we could buy some amazing striker, we could buy some good fullbacks, some better centre-backs, even a new goalkeeper. I'm a little bit excited. I know I've only just got past the Christmas window. I'm excited for the end of the season to see how much money we'll actually get. Because I feel like there are a few upgrades we do need to make. And I obviously mentioned this in the Christmas break, but I didn't want to go out and spend the money. Try and move the, for the team forward and actually really improve it this time around rather than what we've done this year, which is just kind of, I guess, replace a few players. Oh, God, Duncan's injured. All we've done this year is kind of replace players. I don't think we've necessarily upgraded too hard. He's twisted his knee. You can play on, my son. Just see it out for the rest of the half. Nestorovsky. Nestorovsky has almost scored at the near post. We've got Magnanelli on a yellow card. We've also got Sensi on a yellow card. I don't want to take off Duncan, but I might have to. I'm going to do it. I don't want it to be any worse. We need him. He's a valuable player, and if he's... We're already struggling as it is. We need some a fresh pair of legs. So you know what's going to happen. He's going to give away the ball and they're going to score at this point. And I'm switching to two defensive midfielders because I want us to have more of the possession of the ball, control it, and be a bit more careful and structured about how we're doing here. I feel sorry for Danny Ings. He's gone from the high life of Liverpool in the Premier League to this absolute travesty of a team. 
Oh, we could have been one nil there. Get stuck in. Right, let's be a bit more instructive. Play, play the width and hit these early crosses now. We need to start making some opportunities. No! It was, it was gonna happen. I don't know what to do. We're just absolutely being smashed out there. I can't stop them. Can we just concentrate on what we're doing? Why are we just getting the ball, lumping it forward and not doing anything with it? Look at how well they're playing. No one's marking him up. He wasn't even moving. We've got hold of the ball for once in their heart, in their box. Danny Ings has it. Plays it out to Peluso. Can he hit that early cross? No, he goes inside to Mazzatelli. Sensi. Early, early cross to absolutely no one. The one time you should have crossed, you didn't. And the one time you shouldn't have crossed, you did. Apart from our victory against Empoli, and we were very good in that game. Probably could have scored more goals than we did, but we looked very good. Apart from that, that was our first victory in ages. Like We drew against Fiorentina, we drew against AC Milan, we drew against Bologna, we lost against Atalanta, and we drew against Torino. Do you know what I've also noticed is that games where we score two goals, we tend to win them. Like The games we don't pick up the maximum three points in is games where we haven't scored more than one goal. I mean, there's obviously exceptions like Torino in the last game, we scored two goals, and obviously we didn't win that one. But for a lot of the time, the games we are dropping points, it's like one all draws or one nil losses or two one losses where we might not pick up a, except for some of the bigger teams. And that was a really pathetic first half. So can we sort that out? They're playing a very narrow formation. So I think I might play a narrow formation just to try and counteract what they're doing because the width is not really working. Politano has been non-existent. And as a result, let's work the ball in the box, look for the overlap. Ask them to be more expressive, I guess. Just be narrow. Palermo arguably should be comfortably in the lead, but it is only 1-0. And a lot of these games have been the similar... Do not let... What is going on at the back? What is going on here? Oh my... That's just... I was literally just about to say that for the majority of this season, we've had games where we're 1-0 up. We should be well and comfortably in the lead, and we're not in the lead. And then the other team go and score a goal. And I was like, maybe this is one of those games, especially... Whoa! Hello! Okay, we've got one back. Yeah, I was just... <laughs> if I could actually finish what I'm going to say here, it would be really helpful. But basically, everyone knows what being FM'd is about. And I thought, maybe this is a game where FM is actually going to come back and help me. We then score the most... They score the most outrageous deflecting goal. And it looks like some fortune has come on our side. So we're still in this. Putting those fullbacks on attack. Let's go for this. Danny Ings charging forward. Look at him. He's got a point to prove here. Goes for the shot and Pozovic has to parry it away. Sensi goes all the way out to Mazzatelli on the edge of the box. What's he got? Plays it short to Ricci who finds Barani. First time shot and he's cracked the bar. Barani, please. Magnanelli. Ball whipped in. Danny Ings with the skimming header. And we are really turning on the heat. We are playing with enthusiasm. The first half, we were just preheating the oven, but now we've stuck it on full blast. 250 degrees or whatever the maximum thing goes up to. It's probably like 300, I don't know. There's a comment for you. Leave me a comment. What does your oven temperature go up to? The goal that we scored is taking the sting out of them. Let's put Berardi and Ricci on the wing. I think we're back, in, we're back where we want to be. I'm putting them out on the wings put them both as inside forwards. I'm going to put Berardi on inside forward as a support because I think Ricci's a bit... He's been more clinical as of late, whether that's actually the case stat-wise. I'm not too sure, but you've got to play the man in form rather than the stats. Stats don't always tell you everything. Playing with width. Gary Hooper, I think, needs to come on. Maybe the two Englishmen up front might be able to communicate a little bit better, and we've got the two Italians behind them who can communicate and translate each other. Maybe that's all Gary Hooper needed is a fellow Englishman to talk to. He's got no idea on what day of the week it is. He's probably fed up of eating pizza and pasta all day, every day. He probably wants some kebab. You can't... No, I, I, I just can't accept that. I just can't accept that you've let him score that. You are literally holding on to him. You couldn't be closer to him. And you've let him put that in the net. Two of you here, watch this. Ball just comes in. We've got three people chasing it. He's literally could have done anything to stop that. And he just decides not to. Why? Why is that not the case when we go forward and attack from the wing? That never happens. Don't throw this away. They've been pants this half. Go on, Ricci. What you got for me? Whip that in. 
Ball comes in. Danny Ings. He scores from the cross. Ricci and Ings linking up. Two boys are getting it done. 3 2 now. Let's pull the third one back and get this back into drawing contention. They're scared now. Look at it. Danny Ings, exactly what I've wanted him to do. Brings in, brings more attacking threat. He gives options to my wingers and my attacking playmakers. And again, we move forward. Sensi plays Ricci. He has got options. Gary Hooper gets it. Can he get inside? He does. Goes for the shot. Oh, just pile, pile people forward. Like when you're in doubt at this point in the game, you've got to pile people forward. Danny Ings goes for the shot. Oh. Come on, boys. With intent. Peluso. He's got options. It's a dreadful ball. Absolutely dreadful. Get this up there. Go. Quick. With pace. This is the time to say vamos. Correct usage. Vamos. Ball comes in. Ma Morganella at the ball. No. Just. I just. How? How? How has this man scored a hat trick? I can't believe how lucky they've gotten with some of their goals. Like. The deflection, and then this one. Football manager pinball, and he's just, oh, just... I just, What's the point, man? When do I get a game where I FM the computer? You know you get FM'd where you just shouldn't lose, and it just does everything outrageous to come against you? When do I get one of those games? I haven't had one of those games this season. You're usually guaranteed at least one or two. Don't even have it. I don't really have anything to say there other than this game is always uh always leaves you hanging and disappointed. You get really excited and then you're let down.